I go through my phases quite regularly as far as what car I want to get, when I want to get it, should I even buy it. Recently, I was kind of thinking about it, and I said, you know what, I think it's about that time that I go get that 240 S6 that I've always wanted. So, maybe something you guys don't know about me, but one of my favorite cars is the S13 240 SX hatch. As a matter of fact, my, actually, my dad had a 1990 S13, just completely black. It was one of the best cars that I've, like, still have in memory, and, you know, I wish he would have kept it. Had he known how much the value and popularity of it would have gone up, he honestly probably would have. I keep struggling, though, because I have so many cars and so many projects going on all at the same time that do I really want to buy yet another project car on top of everything else, or do I want to finish everything and then get that uh, 240SX? So most of the time it wins out where I say, you know what, let me finish my other cars, and then I'll get the 240, and then I'll start working on it. Um, but as of right now, I just kind of, I wanted to test the waters, I wanted to see what was out there, and so I started looking. And one thing kept popping up over and over again to the point where it was kind of driving me nuts. And it's these guys that have the stock S13, 240SX, or even the S14, and they want some kind of premium price tag for it. So I'm looking at these vehicles, and I mean, they're in decent shape, you know, like whatever, relatively low mileage, like really nice inside and outside. Um, but nothing done to it, and they want something like eight to $10,000 for it. And that is one thing that stock 240SX owners don't understand, is that people who want to buy that car right now, 99% of them want to modify that thing to hell. And most of them do not want that thing stock. And if it is stock, they don't want to pay, you know, eight to $10,000 for it. So if I was buying a stock 240SX, I want to start from fresh, you know, and everything like that, I want to pay less than one that was already modified, right? So if somebody did that SR20 swap or, you know, 2JZ hopefully, uh, where I don't have to do it and I can work off of a platform, great, even better for me, right? I'll pay a little bit extra money because he took the time and energy to find that engine. It's a much better engine, put it in there and actually got through the details. And then I'm gonna, you know, add my flavor to it and modify it slightly. Now, if I want that experience and I want to buy the car and I want to pick out the engine and I want to, you know, do everything from scratch just for the experience, then yeah, you know, I'll be looking for for a stock uh, 240. But again, like I said, I'm not going to be paying eight to ten thousand dollars for that car, and that car is going to sit there for a long time. I'm doing this video because I hope there aren't any suckers out there that are going to look for that car and say, oh wow, this car is going to be collectible one day, especially in this kind of mint condition, and I'm going to pay this premium price tag. Maybe that's the case, maybe, but I highly doubt that that vehicle will ever get to the point where you're going to pay a premium price tag and you're going to keep it for a long enough time where it's going to actually appreciate in value with it being stock, like, like some of these other cars that are appreciating the value. I think your money will be better spent if you invest in some vehicle and you're planning on keeping it in stock. It's not a 240 and then letting it build up from there. But those guys just holding on and trying to sell it for, you know, like I said, eight to $10,000, you're not gonna get that kind of money right now. To you, I give you this advice and that's just keep it, right? You've already kept it for 20 something years probably uh, since you started owning it. So why not just keep it for another 20 something years and see if your bet pays off and you can actually charge that premium price tag for a vehicle, right? Uh, in that case, you better make sure that it's not at 100,000 miles, that it's super low mileage, something like under 20,000 miles, and that way, maybe, just maybe, you're actually going to get some money out of that car. But for right now, if you're just looking at the market and you're seeing what some of these heavily modified cars are going for, and you're thinking to yourself, hey, you know what, these kids are going to pay for a car that's not modified, right? It's not modified, so it should be worth more. That's that's not the correct kind of reasoning with that kind of car. And it's just irking me that I can't find a decent uh, vehicle out there for a reasonable price. And guess what? I'm just not going to buy it. I'll just wait, and I'll just buy 
an even more expensive 240, somebody that's actually invested some money into it. Uh, actually, I'm still beating myself up about it. Not too long ago, I was I, I did find a 2JZ Swap 240SX. I say not too long ago, but it's probably been a little bit over a year. And uh, I think the guy was selling it for like 15 grand, but it was perfect. Just mint condition, everything was done on it exactly the way I would do it. And to be honest, it's it's one of those vehicles that I just want to enjoy driving so much that honestly I wouldn't even mind just buying it completely finished. Like I said, maybe tweak a little thing here and there, but by spending that much money, I probably wouldn't even have to touch it and just have fun with the car and just maintain it and keep it. It's sad that I even have to mention this, but I've also been noticing that there are there is a certain segment that doesn't quite charge as much, but it's pretty close, uh, just because they think they have a 240, right? It's like, oh, I have a 240, so I'm gonna charge whatever the hell I want for it. But I've noticed it's like, it's a stock car and it's automatic. I mean, you're not gonna sell that car, just give up, completely just reduce the price because somebody who's gonna buy that car that's automatic is looking for a deal so they can do that manual swap on it and they're willing to do it, right? So it's gonna cost them an additional chunk of money to, to be able to do that swap. So just let it go. You're not gonna sell that car. Another one that I've been noticing is the convertible. People don't want the convertible 240SX. Maybe there's a small little segment out there, uh, but most people want the hard top 240 and they would rather, um, you know, preferably, like I like the, the hatchback, but I know there are a few people that definitely prefer the, the coupe to the hatchback. So yeah, you could kind of argue that kind of preference. The hatchback just looks a little bit more modern to me. The coupe just looks outdated. That's why I prefer the, the hatchback over the coupe, but and because my dad had the hatchback. But overall, uh, yeah, if, if you have an automatic and you have a convertible, good luck uh, trying to get any kind of uh, price tag for that. And to the people who have the stock manual hatchback that I want, drop that price. You're not going to sell it. You're just aggravating me by having me look at that price tag and just hating you every single day for it. Now that that's out of the way, just thinking about the 240 and some of the modifications that you guys would do. Like I preferably, if I got a 240, it would be one of three engines, either the SR20, the LS1 or the 2JZ. In order of top to bottom, I'd go with the 2JZ, then with the SR20, and then with the LS1. But I'm kind of curious to see what you guys think about that. I know the SR20 swap is the de facto go-to swap, but um, but I don't know if I would ever buy a Supra considering I'm planning in 2024 buying the R34 Skyline as soon as it becomes legal in the States. But I love that Supra sound, so that's why that 2JZ inside a 240SX would be just the best compromise. That way I don't have to have a ridiculous amount of cars, but I can also have the sound that I want. So just kind of curious to see what you guys think. Which engine would you choose to go if you were to buy a 240SX? and why.